Hello and welcome to this PS Trace tutorial video. I'm Lutz Stratmann and today I would like to show you how to do automatic peak search, manual peak search and well some other peak search functions in PS Trace. Okay, so let's just get started. I already opened it and I loaded a curve with multiple peaks. Um, just maybe in advance, um, I would like to show you one feature in the settings. So if you go to Tools, General Settings and Plot and Data, you can actually switch on or off if you want PS Trace after a finished measurement to look automatically for peaks in this measurement. Okay, um, if you don't want that, maybe because your peaks are more complicated and you would like to do them uh, manually, then leave that feature uh, switched off. Otherwise, just check that box. Okay, um, that was just like uh, for warming up. Um, the other part is actually like super easy. If you want to do automatic peak detection, you can just press the auto detect peaks button and the software looks for peaks and try to find them. You see like not always it's very successful. This is like a bit steep, on a steep part of the curve, so that's a bit difficult. You could do a baseline subtraction, which I have talked about in a different video, a video about the curve operations. Um, for example, there you could try to uh, make it easier to find a peak or choose a different method of finding peaks. Well, okay, maybe let's first finish um, the automated uh, peak detection. Um, if you don't want to see any more peaks, you can also remove all peaks with this button very easily, right? And if you want to change the criteria for finding peaks, you can find that here in the peak tab. You can set like what's the minimum peak width and height have to be so that something is accepted as a peak. All right. Um, yes, so these are the automated peak functions, as I said, and as you have seen, they are not always optimal. So let's have a look at the manual peak options. So there are quite a number of different ways to find a peak manually. You could work with a fixed baseline. What does fixed baseline mean? Well, actually, it already tells you. It tells you it wants you to draw the baseline, but it's a fixed baseline. So no matter where your baseline goes to, it will be attached to the curve that you're looking at. And then it will look for the highest point within the two points that you have defined for your baseline. That means only one peak is found, not multiple ones. Um, then I could say I'm finished and I have a peak. I could just repeat it for other peaks. Another option is to draw a free baseline. So just to draw a baseline anywhere. It doesn't have to be attached to your curve. For example, like this, because you think, hmm, maybe this is going back down again and it's just at the end of the potential range. So this is how a baseline for this peak should look like. Um, another option for finding a peak is to define just three points. That's very simple. You say like, okay, so this is part of my baseline, this is my peak, and this is the end of the baseline, and the software turns this into a peak analysis for you. Okay, so the last two options are a bit more advanced than this. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, so um, there is extrapolate a baseline. Well, what does that do? Um, you would try to find, according to the line you already have, uh, a baseline for the rest of the curve. This is, for example, especially interesting in things like linear sweep voltammetry or uh, um, CVs where you expect asymmetric peaks that actually never go back to the original baseline. So where you have just the baseline at the beginning of your curve and then you extrapolate the baseline for the rest. Okay, then, um, oh yeah, also then you see that this window has, uh, the curve calculations have automatically opened. Um, we will talk about these ones uh, at a in a later video in more detail. Okay, uh, now in the manual peaks we have a last 
uh, option that's a bit more advanced. It's just, it's called, well, it's called um, a baseline for a nonlinear peak. So let's say we do realize that this is not a straight line. So maybe we should give it a higher polynome. Oh, we make like the final baseline with a few um, clicks and say like, okay, we have a higher polynome. We apply it and we finish it. And now our baseline has this curvature. Yes, so you choose the order of the polynome. You choose a few points to define your polynome and then you use that as a baseline. So this was manual peak fitting and now I would like to show you um, two more interesting features for peak detection. So you already saw that peak detection for um, this peak was a bit difficult. I have actually an even more extreme example for you. Yes, and I just um, I just isolate the curve that is already after blank subtraction, and you see that still there's a very steep curve, and there are some peaks on that one. So that's usually very difficult to find. If I do the auto detect peaks button, nothing really happens. Well, we do have an altern um, an alternative peak search algorithm for very steep. Uh, baselines. So for that you need to go to tools, general settings, um, and then you go to plot and data and say use alternative peak search algorithm. So you just check that box, you say OK, and if I now have the auto search for peaks, it finds these peaks that are at this very steep level. Um, I would say it's here very important that for this auto detection, I personally would use mainly the position of the peak. Um, the peak height um, is not very good as an absolute value, but you can use it, for example, for rel relations between the peaks. Okay, another very cool feature for peak detection is only available for cyclic voltammetry so or linear sweep voltammetry. So this is why I will load accordingly um, a cyclic voltammogram. So this is a cyclic voltammogram where we see that in the anodic sweep are actually like two peaks overlapping. And in PS Trace you can actually separate these two peaks. You do that with this button which is only available at cyclic voltammetry and linear sweep voltammetry. You open a menu while the curve is, or the data is selected that you want to use. You can now choose if you want to look at the anodic sweep or if you want to look at the cathodic sweep. Well, our two overlapping peaks are at the anodic sweep, so we choose anodic sweep. Then we do first mark the positions of the peaks where we expect them to be according to well the isolated reaction. So ideally you have performed the same measurement with isolated species or maybe you know the, um, the peak potentials from other um, experiments. Okay, so here we're just making first, because we don't have other information, a good guess where the two peaks should be. Okay, and then we say please apply these. And then the next step is already separating these peaks. And then you see how, um, how PS Trace is creating a baseline and is also making uh, two curves, one for peak number one, one for peak number two. And this is how we calculated, um, yeah, how, how these two peaks would look if we separate the two CVs. If you want to know details about how this is calculated, just press the question mark button and you get the help file. Um, so, um, other things you can do in this window is, of course, you can export these curves to Excel, so it's easy to do further processing with them. Well, I might want to um, have now these curves also in the big PS Trace window, so I just press this button and now these curves have, have been added to the big plot then I can close this window and look at these curves. Um, I would like to point out something special about the asymmetric peaks in LSV 
or DPV, you see that they're only having a baseline on one side. And if you hover above them or click on them for more details, you see that the details are limited. Because this is an asymmetric peak, we don't do automatic peak area for you and not um, the um, width of the peak for you. So you only see the position and the height of the peak according to the baseline that you see here. And that is already everything that I wanted to tell you today about peak search. Um, I hope you found that video helpful. If you want to see more of these tutorials, please go to our YouTube channel. If you don't want to miss any of our updates, subscribe to our LinkedIn channel.